Right now on NBC 26 live at 10 and domestic violence numbers continue to rise across Wisconsin. What woman one woman is doing locally to raise awareness. Plus no questions asked police taking guns off your hands and rewarding you for it. And it only happens once a year. The annual tree lighting ceremony at Lambeau Field. We have all the details. Well, we begin tonight with a weather alert. The first accumulating snow of the season is heading our way and could create tricky travel conditions tomorrow. Meteorologist Matt Hoffman has more. Matt? Yeah, Raquel, for most areas, this is really the first kind of bigger snow that we've seen. Some spots have picked up close to an inch. We saw that a few weeks back in Green Bay, but this will be the first snow that's really going to impact your travel, especially tomorrow afternoon. Here comes the snow. It's over Minnesota and Iowa, and it is heading our way for tomorrow much of our viewing area and much of Wisconsin for that matter under a winter weather advisory for your Sunday. We're expecting about one to four inches of snow to fall. There could be a little bit of a mix going on along the lake shore that'll cut rate, uh, snowfall totals rather uh, for areas along the lake. But all in all, we're going to look for some difficult traveling weather tomorrow, especially in the afternoon. That's when the snow will be its heaviest. Here's your day planner on Sunday. We start off dry, but that snow will quickly move in through the morning hours by noon. It'll be snowing pretty good and then we'll continue to snow through the afternoon and then we'll see the snow taper off as we move into the evening hours. That's going to have some interesting impacts for the Packers game. We'll talk more about that and how much snow you can expect across the area coming up in the full forecast. Well, domestic violence related deaths are at an all time high in Wisconsin. So far in 2016, 73 people have died in domestic incidents. But one woman and her organization are raising awareness of that problem and connecting domestic violence victims with resources. NBC 26's Marissa DeCandido joins us with that story. As the number of domestic violence related deaths continues to rise across the state, Heather Severson wants people who may be in trouble to know there are resources for you in Wisconsin. Rows of Christmas trees bringing the holiday spirit to Berlin, Wisconsin. I wish more people knew about it. But this one brings something else. A lot of it has to do with awareness. We're more aware of what's going on with domestic violence homicides. It's not always easy for Heather Severson to feel Christmas cheer on this day, December 3rd. It is just, it's a nightmare. Seven years ago today, she lost her best childhood friend Tracy and Tracy's child Deja in an act of domestic violence. And it can happen. Now, Severson is an advocate for domestic violence awareness through her organization, Treja. We do not have a hotline. Um, people call my cell phone and email me every single day. There's been 73 domestic violence related deaths in Wisconsin this year, the highest number ever recorded in the state. We are on track right now of a homicide every 4.5 days in the state of Wisconsin. But these lives are more than just a number. They're each a loving, vibrant person remembered on this Christmas tree. It puts a face to the victims. It's not just a name, it's not just a statistic, it's not just a number, they're actual people. And through Treja, Severson says she hopes to continue raising awareness in Wisconsin and helping victims, all in memory of Tracy and Deja. Every year on the anniversary of Tracy and Deja's deaths, Severson's group Treja holds a Facebook candlelight vigil where you can post a picture of your candlelight memorial honoring loved ones and they will share them on their page. For more information on that and on domestic violence resources, visit our website, NBC26.com. Keeping you connected, Marissa DeCandido, NBC26. Well, tomorrow marks one year since a deadly standoff in Nina took the life of Michael Funk. You'll remember Brian Flatoff is charged with holding several employees at Eagle Nation Cycles hostage. When Michael Funk tried to escape, he was shot and killed by police in that raid. Tomorrow, there will be a memorial service for Funk at Eagle Nation Cycles at 4 o'clock. Anyone who would like to participate is welcome to attend. A three-car crash holding up traffic most of the day on Ashland Avenue. The accident happened just before noon. Police say they received a call of a reckless driver near Ashland and Lombardi Avenues on the city's west side. While searching for that vehicle, they got the call for the crash. In just our initial investigation, it appears the driver may have had some type of medical condition. Um, we're unsure at this point. Um, the investigation will continue and we'll try to uh, resolve that issue. Ashland Avenue was closed in both directions for several hours while accident reconstruction crews tried to figure out what happened. 
An auto body shop is a total loss in Fond du Lac after an early morning fire. Fire crews say the blaze started around 6.30 at Hiram's Auto Repair on John Street in Fond du Lac. The fire started on a vehicle parked outside the garage, and when crews arrived, it spread into the rafters of that garage. Several fire agencies were called in to help, including the hazmat team, who placed booms in the Fond du Lac River to prevent debris from contaminating that water. The cause of that fire is still under investigation. Well, nine people are dead and dozens others unaccounted for as a result of a warehouse fire in Oakland, California. Crews spending countless hours today searching the warehouse for the missing. Fire crews fear up to 40 people could be dead as a result of that blaze. Oakland officials are not sure what caused that fire. We're expecting the worst, maybe, maybe uh, a couple dozen uh, victims here. Um, we, we've met with a room full of people um, and, and, you know, they're holding on hope. Uh, until they hear. Families hold out for hope. The warehouse was hosting a music event at the time that fire broke out. Well, thousands of protesters are vowing to make what may be their final stand at Standing Rock in North Dakota. The state's governor and U.S. Army Corps of Engineers ordered the protesters evacuate the camp by Monday. Officials say they would not forcibly remove anyone but cite people for trespassing or other offenses. Some protesters don't plan to go quietly, however. A few could be seen building lodges and even bunkhouses. Would we consider pulling back from the bridge? And the answer to that question is yes. We want this to de-escalate de more than anybody does. Activists are protesting the construction of the Dakota pipeline that's supposed to be built across tribal lands and will affect their water sources. Well, a new initiative by the Green Bay Police Department is trying to get guns off the streets. It's all part of the first annual Goods for Guns program. The concept is simple. Bring in a gun you don't feel you can keep safe or that you just want to get rid of. No questions asked and you get a gift card. I, I think we've all seen gun violence in our community. We've seen accidental shootings in our community. And if this program um, has someone turn in a gun that they don't feel that they can keep safe and it, and it stops one accidental shooting from happening or a kid playing with a gun, that's what this is all about. Green Bay Police say in just a few hours they went through the $2,000 grant that they had for this program and were already using crime prevention fund money, collecting more than 100 guns in just a few hours. Well, still ahead on NBC 26, the lights are on at Lambeau Field just ahead of the big game. And a popular NBC 26 face led that ceremony. But first, snow is moving in. How much can we expect? Your forecast is next.